नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय सो दिस मॉर्निंग वी आर स्टडिंग श्रीमद भागवतम फर्स्ट कैंटो चैप्टर एट वर्स नंबर फोर सांतवयाम आसा मुनि भीर सांतवयाम आसा मुनि भीर सांतवयाम आसा मुनि भीर सांतवयाम आसा मुनि भीर हता बंधुन शुचार पितान हता बंधुन शुचार पितान भूतेशु कालस्यो गतिम भूतेशु कालस्यो गतिम दर्शयन् ना प्रतिक्रियाम सांतव्याम आसा मुनि भीर हता बंधु शुचार पितान भूतेशु कालस्य गतिम दर्शयन आ प्रतिक्रियाम क्रिश्चन Santavyam asa pacified muni bhi along with the munis present there hata bandhun those who lost their friends and relatives shuchar pitan all shocked and affected bhuteshu onto the living beings kalasya of the supreme law law of the almighty gatim reactions darshayan demonstrated na not pratikriyam remedial measures translation and proper vachala pravaka citing the stringent laws of the almighty and their reactions upon living beings lord shri krishna and the munis began to pacify those who were shocked and affected the stringent laws of nature under the order of the supreme personality of godhead cannot be altered by any living entity the living entities are eternally under the subjugation of the almighty lord the lord makes all the laws and orders and these laws and orders 
are generally called dharma or religion. No one can create any religious formula. Bonafide religion is to abide by the orders of the Lord. The Lord's orders are clearly declared, declared in the Bhagavad Gita. Everyone should follow him only or his orders and that will make all happy both materially and spiritually. As long as we are in the material world, our duty is to follow the orders of the Lord. And if by the grace of the Lord we are liberated from the clutches of the material world, then in our liberated stage also we can render transcendental loving service unto the Lord. In our material stage, we can, neither our, we can see neither ourselves nor the Lord for want of spiritual vision. But when we are liberated from material affection and are situated in our original spiritual form, we can see both ourselves and the Lord face to face. Mukti means to be reinstated in one's original spiritual status after giving up material conception of life. Therefore, human life is specifically meant for qualifying ourselves for this spiritual liberty. Unfortunately, under the influence of illusory material energy, we accept this spot life of only a few years as our permanent existence and thus become illusioned by possessing so-called country, home, land, children, wife, community, wealth, etc., which are false representations created by Maya, illusion. And under the dictation of Maya, we fight with one another to protect these false possessions. By cultivating spiritual knowledge, we can realize that we have nothing to do with all this material paraphernalia. Then, at once, we become free from material attachment. This clearance of the misgivings of material existence at once takes place by association with the Lord's devotees, who are able to inject the transcendental sound into the depths of the bewildered heart and thus make one practically liberated from all lamentation and illusion. That is a summary of the pacifying measures for those affected by the reaction of stringent material laws exhibited in the forms of birth, death, old age and disease, which are insoluble factors of material existence. The victims of war, namely the family members of the Kurus, were lamenting the problems of death and the Lord pacified them on the basis of knowledge. Thank you everybody for being here. Um, so every verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam is uh, meant to increase our love for Krishna, love for hearing about Krishna, love for his devotees. Every verse is meant to do so. Every shloka, actually prati shloka, prati akshaya, every word, every shloka is, is for that purpose only, for bhakti. And so in this shloka, um, we are hearing that the, there's something in the, in the word to word, the word is kalasya. That is kala, you know, kala means time. So, and then the other word is darshan na pratikriyam. Na pratikriyam. Prabhupada translates that, he doesn't translate that in the, in the translation, but in the purport, he, in the first line, he says, cannot be altered. Um, so Kala, the, the laws, Prabhupada writes in the first sentence, the stringent laws of nature under the order of the Supreme Godhead cannot be altered by any living entity. So <coughs> I wanted to speak something about time, Krishna's relationship with time and, um, and get to know Krishna a little bit more, how he deals with time, what is time, and in that way we can um, uh, hear again about something about Krishna. So here, Krishna is saying about time that it cannot be altered, the stringent laws of nature. We see the same thing, uh, Bhishma Dev, when Bhishma Dev was lying down on the bed of arrows, 
at that time, um, Krishna came, actually all the sages came during that time, and uh, the Pandavas came with Krishna. And when Bhishmadev saw the Pandavas, his heart was filled with, with love, love and affection. And he started thinking about what the Pandavas went through. He is the grandfather of all and is looking at his grandkids. And they're adults and everything, but they are still his grandchildren. And he's filled with affection and, and is thinking, how is that all of you went through what you went through? Uh, I'd like to read what he's, his, his own words. Bhishma Dev said, Oh, what terrible sufferings and what terrible injustice you good souls suffer for being the sons of religion personified. You did not deserve to remain alive under those tribulations. Yet you were protected by the Brahmanas, God, and religion. And then he says in the next verse, the Sanskrit is Sarva Kala Kritam Manye. Sarva Kala, I think it's nothing but time. This is, Kala Kritam is done by time. And this is what I think. Manyan is I think. So I'm thinking this is all due to time. And he says, in my opinion, this is all due to inevitable time under whose control everyone in every planet is carried, just as the clouds are carried by the wind. So in, in his opinion, it is time that caused what the Pandavas, who are such good souls, you don't expect good souls to go through that. And his opinion is that it's the time. And then he says, oh, how wonderful is the influence of inevitable time. It is irreversible. So he makes the same point, the stringent laws cannot be altered, na pratikriyam. Same thing he says here, that it is irreversible. And he further on says, how can there be reverses in the presence of King Yudhishthir, the son of the demigod controlling religion, Dhima, the great fighter with a club, the great bowman Arjun with his mighty weapon, Gandiva, and above all the Lord, the direct well-wisher of the Pandavas. So he's saying the reason they went through is irreversible time. And even it seems like he's saying that even in the presence of the Lord. In other words, seems like the point he's making is that even the time, even time cannot be reversed by Krishna. Does that mean that uh, Time controls Krishna. It sounds like that. Bhishma Devi is saying it, it's irreversible. In the third canto, Vidura asks Maitreya. He asks about time. He says, Oh, greatly learned sage, kindly describe me eternal time. So time is a very interesting topic. Everybody wants to know what is time. What is time? How does it relate to Krishna? Is it something we can touch? What is it? I mean, we, we, we are always looking at time. I mean, time is almost like our deity. I mean, I wish the time was a deity because we're always looking at time. It's time to do this. It's time to do that. It's time to, we're, it's time to go to bed. How many times do we, how many times do we look at the time? As many times as we look at time, we can think about Krishna, or we can, you know, I have a clock actually in our house that has Krishna on there, and, and the time is there, the clock is there with the Krishna on there. Devahuti gave it to me long ago, 30 years ago or something. But yeah, if we can see time when we're seeing time, we, we can see Krishna when we're seeing time. So anyway, Maitreya uh, uh, responds to Vidura. He says, eternal time is the primeval source of interactions of the three modes of material nature. Okay, that goes beyond my head. But let me look at the little adjectives that he says. 
He says, it is unchangeable. So time, again, cannot be changed. And it's limitless. It, it's limitless. There is no start, or there is no end to it. The time will never end. It will never end. Time is limitless. But then he says, it works as the instrument of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So it's an instrument. Time seems from what Vidura is saying, I mean, Maitreya is saying, that time is actually an instrument. Krishna uses it as an instrument. Uh, further, he says, uh, Maitreya Muni says, um, it is unmanifested impersonal feature. So time is an impersonal feature of the Lord. Not a personal, it's impersonal. And then he says it is situated as the objective manifestation of the Lord. So it's objective. It's not subjective. It's objective. No matter who it is, time goes on. It's, that's just how it is. So then we can see from what Vidura uh, uh, has heard from Maitra Muni that time is actually uh, an instrument of Krishna. Krishna is independent. Krishna is not controlled by time. Krishna is Swarat. Janma dasya yaton vayad itaras chatheshwa bhigya Swarat. Swarat means independent. That in the very first verse of the Bhagavatam, it describes that Krishna is Swarat. So he cannot be controlled by anybody. So was Bhishma not aware of this? How does Bhishma say that time is irreversible, even though Krishna is present, still almost like he is not in control? But actually, after that verse that uh, Bhishma Dev says that, oh, how wonderful is the influence of inevitable time, it is irreversible. The next verse, text number 16, he says, O king, no one can know the plan of the Lord, Sri Krishna. So, although he said it's irreversible, the very next verse, um, Bhishma Dev says that no one knows the plan of the Lord. So why would he say that? Saying that Krishna is in control. Although time is irreversible, but then he says, is under Krishna's plan and we don't understand what Krishna's plan is. How could such good souls have gone through such difficulty? We don't know we, because we don't understand what, what are Krishna's plans, what is, why he does what he does. So if we go back to the first, today's verse, here is describing that Krishna and Krishna with the Munis, he began to pacify, uh, pacify the, you know, Draupadi and um, Gandhari and everybody else, Arjun and everybody who had the remaining um, souls that were left, he was pacifying them. So if you can kind of imagine the scene, there here is Krishna and here all his closest, dear most devotees are there and they're so distraught they are so, they're overwhelmed with, with, with uh, emotions of loss and grief. And, and Krishna, who we have established that he is the controller, even, even though he is saying here to his loved ones that, listen, these are the stringent laws this is time and you know this is what we can't we can't do anything about it almost he's saying so why is krishna who is the controller is saying that is, is he kind of being like a um you know try, trying to play innocent uh, although he's the culprit right there uh, is he, is he being like that? Actually, just now, it just made me think about when, when, um, when I joined the temple, or when I ran away from home, uh, and in the, um, ran away from Ireland to America, and, 
my brother was still in, in Ireland and my mother was all worried. So she was wondering where did I go. So he pretended, he didn't know. He pretended the innocent person who didn't know anything what was going on. And so later on, when my mother asked a couple of devotees or whatever, one of the devotees said, uh, didn't you tell me that you went to America? So here was an inno he pretended to be innocent, but he knew everything. And, you know, he got into trouble after that. But is that what Krishna is doing? He's just playing innocent here, but he can actually do? No. Krishna is, is, is actually, Krishna is very straightforward. This verse actually to me, and I'm sure different devotees can see different qualities of Krishna coming out from here. One of the qualities for me shows that Krishna is straightforward. And we know he's also compassionate. Both those two things are coming. Why straightforward? He's straightforward because he, has, he actually told Arjun in the Bhagavad Gita, um, in the Bhagavad Gita after, in that 11th uh, chapter, Krishna is, uh, after Arjun <coughs> accepts that Krishna is God, then Arjun says to Krishna, could you show me that, your, that form, that cosmic manifestation form? And Krishna said, sure, I will show you. What do you want to see? I'll show it to you all. And in that, when Krishna shows, and that called what, what it show and tell, um, I, I, Krishna, Arjun wasn't really thinking that that's what he's going to be seeing. Just to show you what he saw uh, and how straightforward Krishna is, he says, um, Anyway, he, I, I somehow don't have it in my notes here, but he basically um, Arjun, when he sees uh, uh, Krishna's universal form, he actually sees everybody rushing, rushing into Krishna's mouth. All the sons of Vitrasha, along with their allied kings and Bhishma, Drona, Karna, and our chief soldiers also are rushing into your fearful mouth. And then listen to this. And some I see trapped with heads smashed between your teeth. Wow, what a scene to look at. Arjun here is, doesn't want to fight. And imagine that heads sm stuck in between Krishna's teeth. Ooh, <coughs> how horrible. But this is, this is the universal form. And so at that stage, Arjuna is asking, who are you? What is your mission? What have you here come from? Who are you? I mean, I'm thinking you're my friend, you know, but what, who are you? Can you imagine, like, one of your friends exhibits something like that, their form, like, ghastly form? So he's, he's like so bewildered. And then what does Krishna say about himself? The first thing Krishna says, time I am. He says, time I am. And I have come here to destroy all people. That's what I've come here. I'm time. And I'm going to destroy everybody. And then he specifically name, names, N not only that Arjun saw, but he names people. He says, Drona, Bhishma, Jadratha, Karna, and other great warriors have already been destroyed by me. Therefore, kill them and do not disturb. So Krishna is straightforward. He clearly tells him. He told him, hey, I am time, and I am going to destroy everybody. People that you love, Bhishma and Drona, and people who you are bewildered right now, they're think they're, you're thinking they're yours, but people you don't really so much care for, I'm, I'm going to kill all of them. People you love and people you don't. So, get up and fight. Get up and fight. 
Don't worry about your emotions. Whatever you, have, whatever you are afraid of, it's already done. I did it. Just be an instrument. In, be, but be an instrument in the fight. So Krishna is, is, is straightforward. And so when he's saying here, and he's, he's kind of like uh, giving, uh, consoling them, it's not that he's pretending that he does not know anything. He already told. He already told that this is what's going to happen. And it did happen. But another thing that you see, that fact is that Krishna is compassionate. He's pacifying those who are shocked and affected. He's pacifying them. And how is Krishna pacifying them? How is he showing his compassion to his loved ones? Through giving them knowledge. Krishna is giving them knowledge. He's telling them about the nature of this material world, the nature, the stringent laws of the Almighty. And so Krishna is compassionate to us all. He gives us the Bhagavad Gita. He tells us very clearly that this place is Dukhalayam, Ashashvatam. He tells us that. But he tells us what to do. He tells us how to overcome time. He tells, his devotees tell us, here Prabhupada, one sentence was really, Prabhupada writes here in the purport, the clearance of the misgivings of material existence at once takes place by association with Lord's devotees who are able to inject, hear this carefully, who are able to inject the transcendental sound into the depths of the bewildered heart and thus make one practically liberated from all lamentation and illusion. This is, this is what Krishna does, this is what his devotees do. And so Krishna tells us, his devotees tells us how we can overcome time. In the second canto, um, I think it was Shanaka Rishi, he says, Ayur harati vai pumsan uddyan astan chayan asau tasya ritek tachanonita uttama shloka vartaya. So he's saying that how, what, as the Uddhyan Asan, as the sun rises and sets, as that happens, Ayur Harati, it takes away our life. This is how our life is gone. As the sun rises and the sun sets, our life is gone. It reduces, it reduces. However, there's one thing he says further, Tasya rite, accept, rite means accept. Accept yat shana nita, that time, that moment that is used in uttama shloka vartaya, in hearing the glorification of the Lord. That moment does not take away our life. So if you just sit in the Bhagavatam class all day, all night, you will be young forever. That's what it is. So you want to live forever, just hear the Bhagavatam every day. But what, what does it mean? It means that our body will certainly dwindle. That's just what it is. It's going to dwindle. But what happens as we hear the Bhagavatam? As we hear the Bhagavatam every day, every moment, then it actually rejuvenates, it increases our spiritual life. It gives us spiritual happiness. Is that right, Satyasara? You hear so much Bhagavatam, so many readings you are in, and you just hear and you're so enlivened. You're hearing, it's like even when we're not reading, oh, I'm ready to hear more. I, I'm, I'm going to, yesterday we were reading the Brihad uh, uh, Bhagavatam Mita, and uh, yeah, Satyasara said, I know, I, I'm going to, this, going to do my own reading before and after, you know, to, to assimilate what I have heard. So it is, it is so, you actually feel enlivened, you feel enlightened. You actually, your life increases. You feel spiritual bliss. So even if the body is dwindling, it doesn't make a difference. You feel enlivened. And that's what Krishna is saying, that in, this is how we can 
we can actually conquer time because everyone is fighting against time. Everybody is fighting against time. But if we are looking at our clocks and think, oh good, it's time to get, get up. Get up to go to Mangalarti, get, get up and chant my rounds, get up to hear the Bhagavatam. It's time for me to, to do my reading. It's time for, even if I have to go to work, I can still meditate on this. I can hear a class. I can, so this is how we can actually overcome the stringent laws of the material world. We don't have to be fighting like an ordinary materialist, but we can actually um, become, um, become enlivened and we can conquer time and be with, um, uh, be with the devotees and uh, hear Krishna Katha, do some service. That's what we can do, just meditate on Krishna and meditate on the glories of his devotees and uh, pastimes and yeah, there's just so much nectar, so much to do, so much to hear upon, about. Yes, Prabhu? He, he moved into the ashram just because he just enjoys hearing, being with the devotees and hearing Krishna Katha. Why are we all here? Because we do enjoy Krishna Katha, yeah? I mean, and, but we have to be very careful that we don't waste a single moment because it, that moment doesn't come back. It just doesn't come back. If you go on the internet and you listen to news, you go and read the news, don't click that other button to see what's, oh, where, what happened, and let me look at this. Just read the, if you want to keep up with the time, just read the main headings or whatever. Just don't go and click that extra button there. Just don't do that because that will just take our t precious time and we'll, we can never bring it back. And whereas if we put our time and energy in hearing the Bhagavatam, in the very first, second verse, the second verse of the Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimva Para Ishvara Sadhya Hrida Avarudhyate Shushu Shubhis That Shanat That very moment, that Shanat At that very moment Sadhya Hrida Avarudhyate Krishna is established within our heart as we hear the Bhagavatam. Right away. We don't have to worry about it. So the more we hear Srimad Bhagavatam, the more we hear CC, the more we be with the devotees who are hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, then we can conquer the stringent laws of the Almighty. Thank you very much for your kind attention. If you have any questions or comments, please. Yes, Satya Saramataji. Mm -hmm. is like enlightening but you know some places in the Bhagavatam where there's a whole list of names uh, uh, where so and so is the descendant of so and so and they're so and so begot by so and so so and so well is that inclusive? Yeah, uh, everything includes it. everything even, even the most I shouldn't say because boring of, some, of, some of those know, things okay. like the creation part or that this is a so they're boring because it's hard to understand or the names because we don't know them but the fact is that yes each and every because they are telling us about krishna because they're taught for example just, just give an example if um somebody tells you oh satyasara who, who's your father your father's name and your grandfather's name and who was so and so and you hear about their names, you feel happy. You, you, you're connected to them. We get to know you and you feel happy because you're connected to all that great history. So all these people that are named, these are all names of all Krishna's, um, they're all related to Krishna. These are Krishna's uh, devotees who are, have taken charge of things you know, who have done seva, who have done so. I mean, that's one way that I see. But yes, each and every name and each and every person that is there purifies our heart as we listen to it. Okay. and, and another Even if thing, we don't understand, even if we don't, we just read it, yeah. <laughs> even though if it's hard. Okay, and another thing was... Um, when we are not talking, we don't need master. When we are talking, we oh, sorry. <laughs> because they see it. Okay. 
Okay, and then the other thing that I thought of, because you were talking about time, was that in the spiritual world, there is no time. So, how would that be? Because time, Krishna uses the time is just for this material world. And, and that's what Vidura was saying at that time. Um, Vidura said, let me tell you what Vidura said. Um, he said, Eternal time is the primeval source of the interactions of the three modes of material nature. So the three modes are just in this material world. And then, um, um, Maitramani, not Vidura. Then Maitramani says, it is unchangeable, limitless. It works as an instrument of the Supreme Personality of Godhead for his pastimes in the material creation. So the time is only for the material creation. Whereas there is no time in the spiritual world. There is no time. Nobody has to look at any time. Nobody, it's like whenever Krishna wants, the sun can rise, the sun can set. I mean, this, this has, there is no meaning to time in that sense. Krishna is there doing whatever he wants to do, whenever he wants to do. At least that's what my understanding is. Okay, thank you. Yes, um, Sri Devi. Yeah, it's time. It's 10 minutes to 9. Thank you, Madam Prabhu. That was such a nice class. Um, yeah, yeah this, this time factor, which is in the material world, it's like so painful in so many ways. Right? Because it's like makes you think of, for example, something in your past or, you know, in your childhood, and you're like, oh, that was like so wonderful. And then it's irreversible. Like, you'll never be that person again, you'll never have those things again. You know, like Prabhupada said, at, when he was like a sannyasi, he said like, where are all those people like from my childhood? Where, you know, all those people that loved me, where are they? Like, they're gone. So this time factor is like, it's so, if we focus on it too much, it can really like, put us into lamentation. Yeah. And so we always have to try to like, look forward and to our spiritual life and to like our spiritual future instead of this time factor which is so it can be like so painful yeah, I, I, I mean we can be used in a positive sense too like oh look how far i've come since then but there's such a like painful element about it right yeah oh no you're a, you're absolutely right i mean that's exactly what what you're saying is exactly what krishna is saying to the pandavas that stringent it's the it's it's very pain it's actually when you see it it's very cruel time is in one sense you see it manifests has it's in, in a very cruel way like you said but just the fact that people have to die the time the the sun is rising and everything's so beautiful and the sun is setting and everything is so beautiful but the fact is that just shows that what is the nature of time so time can be, yes, when you focus on it, time is very, can be very cruel, or is cruel in one sense. But then, like anything, there's duality in this world, and so we always focus um, to, um, so yes, there's duality, that's the nature of this material world. So we focus on the positive. Well, the, it'll be so ecstatic when in the spiritual world, there's no past, present, or future. Mm -hmm. So there won't be that, <laughs> We won't be looking at time. But, but maybe there is a certain, uh, I don't know, and maybe Prangu in the group we can say, but I'm assuming there is a certain conception that, oh, uh, Krishna is hungry, Mother Yashoda is thinking, I, I have to cook, I'm rushing out of time. Um, I'm assuming that kind of goes on uh, in the spiritual world. That, that anxiety has to be there, otherwise it's no fun. Do you have something to say, Prangu in the Prabhu, about that? I'm trying to avoid myself, but uh, <laughs> that you brought a very big subject matter. See, that verse 325, uh, 325, 38, Vishwanath Chakuti take those words that actually time has no effect to the devotees in the material world. Time is there. In Gulag Vrindavan, time is a pleasurable. They have a Astra Prahar. 
the Radha Krishna's union is divided by eight times three. Origin of this 24 hours is there. It's not something created by America or British or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, it is originally there. Uh, but here, the Vishwanath Chakuti Thakur dialogues that the time is the, well, first day. I'm just thinking like how to uh, maybe not say everything. <laughs> what is the cause of the suffering of the Pandavas? So you, they you, went. You really it, have a problem with, I mean, you, you must be really like fighting with time because you have so much to say, but then the time is so short. So that must be very hard for you, Prabhu. Thank you. <laughs> you know, you just reveal my heart. Actually, I am always battling <laughs> with time and I am feeling guilty because Krishna is the time and I say, ah, please forgive me. I just, but I always have a, like a fight with the time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think we should leave it. But I think the time has a value. You know, to begin something, what is the most valuable thing about time? To begin anything. If there is no time, how do you know when? When Prabhupada came to America, do you know? Yeah, the time. How long did he preach? Everything is time. Yeah. So, time is valuable. Yeah. Krishna, Hare Hare Hare, thank you for the class. Um, <clears throat> Sanskrit is a spiritual language, is that correct? So it's sung in the spiritual world? I know it's, um, it's uh, <coughs> Devanagari, it's, it's, the, it's the language for the demigods. I'm not too sure what they, do they speak Braj in, in the spiritual world or what do they speak in, in, in Goloka Vrindavan? All the language. All the language. Because I think <laughs> okay, time is cooking. Let us go. <laughs> I, I, that's interesting. My question relates to that. All, well, I'm studying English at the moment, right? An editing course. And the language, um, it accompanies time. So there's different tenses for past, present, future. Mm -hmm. And similarly, that's in other languages. So if they're all spoken in the spiritual world and there's no time, there's eternity. How does that work? Well, just like Prangovinda Prabhu just said, that time is there but it's not there in the form that we think. Although my understanding was that yes, time, time is not there in the sense that how it is here, that it has to be done. In other words, when, when Prangavana goes to the spiritual world, he won't have to worry about the time because he can just speak there forever. There's no like, you know, he, he can do that and he won't have to worry about because Krishna can elongate anything or make it small or big. So that's, he's not, um, it's, it's not controlled, it's not rest, it's restricted by how it is restricted here. So yes, you can say yesterday that happened or tomorrow that will happen. I'm assuming that goes on. I mean, past, present and future and yet it's inconceivable. That's the word. It's inconceivable. Thank you. Th that's the answer to all the questions. Yes, the only Yes, the in spiritual world, everyone is lost in the moment. Ah. Lack of conditional sense meditating on past, present, future. Srila Prabhupada talked about it in Japan, winter 1974. Wow. That's so sweet. The Vrajbhasis, they are just lost in the moment. <laughs> there is the answer to all. So there is no past, present, and future. They are just lost in the present right there. Shanat, that time, that moment. Jai. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Yes.